<laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. Today is going to be, we will call it Terrific Tuesday because I get to get the inside scoop on a place that I have admired, watched, looked at, wished I could have bought, but I didn't win the lottery, and it would take winning the lottery to turn this beautiful home home. It's not a home, it's a school. But you could turn it into homes, and I think Airbnb in each different room would be the coolest thing. So, guys, welcome. Tell us your name. I'm Jason Collis. And? My name is Rick Curtis. And tell us who your precious, precious little daughter is. Well, <laughs> everybody knows my daughter, Kelly, Kelly Henson. That's right. Kelly, 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 and good morning, precious Kelly. We love you. We love you. Guys, we're here to talk about an event that, number one, is bringing three of my favorite groups together, the Parton family that I adore, the Kaler family, and Raven Welch. Right. And we're going to have some really great music, but the best thing about it is you chose a spot that is dead on perfect. Tell me a little bit about why and how you did this. Well, I was telling him on the way up here, my wife and I used to kid about if we ever won the lottery, we would buy Ducktown or Turtletown School and mm -hmm. turn it into something. It, because they was both, you know, falling Sitting apart. There, yep. So we used to have to play the lottery first, I guess, but we didn't win the lottery. But I woke up basically with it on me that that's what I was going to do, and it would not go away. Wow. Didn't have the money, but I took a leap of faith and uh, sold some stuff and got a down payment and, and made my way. And uh, it's been provided. Every time yeah. that I needed money, it's been provided. and. The vision's really starting to come together. It's it's made leaps and bounds mm -hmm. from where it was. Now, I've never been inside it at all. I've looked in the windows and the doors. So intact when you got it? Was it intact or was it in disrepair? What kind of shape was it in? It was it was pretty rough. The township had they had worked and kept security there for mm -hmm. so long. I remember but, that. Yeah. But after a while, you know, they had spent so much money on it, it's Eventually, they had to let go of the security and stuff, mm -hmm. and so they the windows was busted out. To get in, you know, you had to reach in and unchain doors, mm -hmm. and so I, there was no power and water. The basement had been flooded, and everything had to be tore out. So that was my first hurdle: is getting that going. We have power and water, mm -hmm. and then there was the water damage inside the auditorium the ceiling had fell in on oh and so the, the roof plaster. i can't even imagine what a roof for that would cost a lot i've been working on it for about two years yeah i would so, say a lot <laughs> so it, yeah that's definitely i think i got my first quote was almost half a million dollars yes and so i thought well i'll never have a roof mm -hmm. but it it things have been provided so i've done sections at a time and it was a stuff I had done before so I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. Luckily it's mostly concrete mm -hmm. so or it would have been just deteriorated. Wow. So. Wow. How crazy. Now what age is this school? It was built in 1931. Okay. Um, it was it's a, older than me. There are rare things <laughs> older than me. <laughs> well it's not older than all of us put together. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but um, it was intended for a great idea. It was intended for people to be able to go to high school, come over and get government funded uh, education and then that was when we had the company we never thought would go anywhere. Right, right. So you would go straight into being an engineer and stuff. Great idea. But yeah. who foreseen the company would yeah. would do what it did. So yeah. it, it turned out to be a high school. And for people who are watching us elsewhere, the company was the copper mine right. company that was there for since the 1800s. So if you've been there since the 1800s, it's a pretty sure thing you're not going anywhere. Wrong. Yeah. Wrong. Think again. Went there. Gone. So then it turned into a high school? It was a high school. Okay. For uh, basically, then it was K through, I guess, first grade through high school mm -hmm. and it I think in the early 80s it became Ducktown Elementary School mm -hmm. and I actually went to school there I won't tell what year but it wow. was in the early 80s wow. I started kindergarten there and went all the way through seventh grade there. So you've had a love for this place for a long time. I definitely have. Yeah. yeah. Now what about the cafeteria was it still intact? The cafeteria has got some issues I've had to do some roof repair and things there but my vision was to make this a almost like a town on a hill, a city mm -hmm. on a hill. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, and I'm still seeking someone that's that's got a vision, that's 
ambitious mm -hmm. and that won the lottery that maybe they did win the lottery <laughs> yeah, 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 they're yeah, gonna yeah. need to yeah. bring their pocketbook yeah yeah but and they'll let them open a restaurant there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so then i would have you know all kinds of amenities you'd have the gym you'd have the auditorium right camping areas and things right. like that hiking trails and a, a place to come and eat. Now, are the classrooms set up that you could have? Have you ever been to the John Campbell Folk School? Yes. Okay. Could you do, like, I could rent one room and I could have my antiques and collectibles in there. You could rent the room next door and you could have woodwork in there. Is it set up that you could do it as a shopping mall with a restaurant and with basically if I go to Helen, Georgia, you got to park and you got to get out in the rain and you got to go to all these little shops. Could you have amazing numbers of shops and well, craftsmen in there? Wouldn't that be cool? It's interesting that you said that because I'm kind of wanting to merge two ideals. I'm really just trying to be bluntly spirit-led on it because something I've been talking about, and I had some people come by from Tennessee that's involved in the school system, mm -hmm. is they have a what's called a pie center in Cleveland, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And what the setup is, is you have businesses that come in and some of them are shops like that and mm -hmm. others at restaurants mm -hmm. but you can also have people from the schools that are wanting to seek those trades mm -hmm. so they come in and job shadow mm -hmm. they get paid they get education and then a section of it i've got intended for advanced woodworking mm -hmm. and things like that so you can come out of high school a uh, six months course you can read blueprints uh, rafters and things that's like that. amazing. Then you can go straight into the workforce. Yeah, See, that yeah. stuff's getting forgotten, but we've yeah. seen when COVID hit, mm -hmm. what was the important jobs. Yeah, yeah. And a plumber, a plumber. And after the freeze that when we had minus 10 degree weather, exactly. plumbers were out buying their wives Cadillacs, <laughs> buying them Lincolns, <laughs> buying them anything they wanted because plumbers did very, very well. Right. A plumber, an electrician, a, any craftsman, because I will tell you, when you're remodeling a house, the first guy you want to fall in love with is your surveyor. Because if he shows up on time, you're good. The next one is the guy who does your wood trim. Because if you do a room and you can't trim it out properly, it's not going to look not good. Finished, right? <laughs> no. So, so that's amazing that you had that vision. Now, money-wise, I, I I would call it a money pit because I would say it could it could cost a couple of million. Probably Easily. to do what needs to be done. Easily. And honestly, people, everybody says I'm crazy. I'm dependent on if I'm going the right direction, doing what I'm supposed to be, I believe it'll be provided. Mm -hmm. I will eventually cross paths with the right person that mm -hmm. has a similar vision to me right. and is willing to invest with me. And, right. and when that happens, a lot more will happen. Sure. But yeah. it's in phases, it's been going great. Yeah. Our festivals is, we have such a good time at those. Mm -hmm. and. That's what we do. We have, I think the last one we had 46 vendors, mm -hmm. and a lot of it's outside, but it's such a such a great atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really is. So we would like to eventually go to that. And I'm being careful what I do with the rooms. I don't want to take up too much time on that, but because of what you just said, I can leave them open. I wouldn't leave and them And then open. people can come. And now there's a couple I'm going to do because my strong vision is to be able to have a place to do youth retreats. Mm -hmm. If nothing doesn't go wrong, mm -hmm. this summer we're going to do our first one. I'm going to try to bring the churches together in mm -hmm. the area and have a huge That'd be awesome. youth retreat. Yeah. And yeah. conventions and revivals and things mm -hmm. would be great for stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and the so. location is perfect for that because you can take them rafting, you can take them exactly. on hiking, exactly. you know, beautiful hiking in the area. So yeah, that makes sense. Now why is this gentleman here? I just found him on the side of the road. <laughs> oh, side of the road coming up here. I know. Well, I used to get the honor of taking his money on Sundays because he Did brought he? his wonderful family to the Yellow Jacket and I would take his money on Sundays. So, yeah, yeah, Every yeah. Every Sunday we was at the Yellow Jacket. Oh, my gosh. And how we miss that so oh, much. Well, that fried chicken and them it. cream taters and green beans. Lord <laughs> roast, have mercy. And beef. the best slaw in the world. That yes. Was a, that, was oh. a, that was an icon up there. Yes, it was. It was. Now, now why are you involved in the singing? Well, uh, first first of all, whenever <coughs> I seen Jason's school before it was fixed, mm -hmm. and then our local grammar school had their white Christmas up there. Mm -hmm. So we walk in the auditorium, and I seen it before he worked on it. 
and I looked at the auditorium and it just took my breath away. Amazing. It yeah. is, it is, it's a sight to see. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I, so excited. And I I'm told, so I, excited. I told my wife on the way home, I said, we need to get behind Jason on this and, mm -hmm. and help him along the way. You know, mm -hmm. this is a battle that he's fighting that he don't need to fight alone. Right, right. Because so, it's for the betterment of the community. It is. The it's whole a community, community thing. Yeah, and he yeah. never, anytime anybody wants to use it, he never mentions money. He never mentions you pay this or that. It's just there. And that's, that's, that's awesome. commendable. That's awesome, yeah. So, I, and I got to thinking what we could do, and and I, I reached out to Eric Chastain that done Singing in the Mountains mm -hmm. and Ryan Norton and told him my thoughts of want, wanting to do a singing out there. Mm -hmm. And he gave me his blessings on it, you know, so that would be an awesome idea, Rick. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a singing out there uh, April the 22nd. It's going to call Kimsey Ridge Gospel Sing. Mm -hmm. It'll be the same format type singing as Singing in the Mountains. Mm -hmm. We'll have uh, the Kaler family, which everybody loves the Kaler right, family. Right. I love them. And uh, the Chris Rumfelt family. We have uh, the, the Parton family out mm -hmm. of here mm -hmm. in LJ. We've mm -hmm. got Raven Welch, mm -hmm. plus a couple others. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess my, uh, my the one I'm most excited about, you know, is and I probably nobody's heard of her, is Lily Whitener. Uh, and, Lily, and Lily Whitener is just a little girl. I work mm -hmm. for Aiken's Cobb Funeral Home mm -hmm. part-time. Mm -hmm. And she's singing at a service for us one day. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the service and she started to sing and I was just blown away. She's probably wow. eight or nine or 10 years old. Really? And she was playing the piano and singing and, I, and it just come to me. Man. Why is she not here today to play that piano? Well, Why didn't you call her? Well, I should have. You're fired. You cannot be <laughs> well, my assistant you if you much. can't but, get it right. <laughs> but I was listening to her sing, and I thought, man, she's got to be at Kimsey Ridge. Yes. She has to be. Yes, yes. And I thought, we need to encourage these young mm -hmm. people. Exactly. We need, we exactly. need to encourage them. So after the service, Absolutely. I went up to her mom and dad, and I said, told her who I was, and and I said, told her, told them what I had in mind. I said, would, would, uh, would you and allow Miss Lily Whitener to come and sing for us. And I was watching her, and, and when I sang that, said that, her eyes just lit up. Wow. And I thought, man, this is so That awesome. is precious. But yeah. I'm, I'm real excited about Lily Whitener coming. Yeah. She's just a little girl, and she's, I mean, she hits every note, and hits every tune, and wow. uh, I'm just real excited. Wow. I'm excited about all of them, but yeah, it's, yeah. I'm just excited about it. Well, the her. one thing I want to throw at you, and because I loved singing in the mountains, went year after year after year, loved it, loved it, loved it, but, I'm glad that you don't have so many groups because if you travel far, and the groups, some of them will travel a little bit further than others, let them do at least five songs. Yeah. You know, don't limit them to two because I always thought that was not a disrespect because you're bringing more groups, but bring less groups each time and let them do at least five songs because you always have their favorites. And if they only get to choose two, they might not choose my favorite, well, you know. That's, that's right. I live again with the Kalers might be my favorite. So, so if you if you keep it to four groups and maybe her is a special entertainment, yeah. that's five entertainers, five times five songs. That's that's all they need to do. But that's at least enough that it gets their gets them out there. Two songs, it's kind of hard to right. hard to get into it. And so. we're also going to have a community choir, mm -hmm. just like they did singing the mountains. We're hoping to get. 50 or 60 or 70, we've got, I've got about 35, between 35 and 40 mm -hmm. now. We really like to have at least 60 in the choir. Mm -hmm. So uh, my thought process was to have each group sing four songs mm -hmm. and then some choir singing in mm -hmm. between. But you mm -hmm. know, we might could do five songs. Whatever you want, Sherry, that's what we're yeah. gonna do. <laughs> I'll, I'll write number. that down right here. <laughs> the magic five. number. Yeah, the yeah, magic yeah, number's yeah. five. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Just and, change that. And let Miss Lily open yeah. With the maybe the national anthem. Well, Did I've got a lady that, that I reached oh, out to okay. sing. Okay. Miss Lily, uh, she sung a song at the service. Yeah. And I, man, she just blew it away. Yeah. That's I awesome. said I would love for you to sing that song, or if you have another one, you sing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 That's precious. But anyway, but we we've got we've and got. And how that. appropriate for a child to go to this school because exactly. the school is you know yeah. where those kids get a lot of what they learn in life. Right. Yeah, that's cool. So we're we're really excited about it. Now, what about sponsorships? Do you have sponsors? How are you, how are you pulling this off? How did you pull this hat out of your well, back pocket? Rick's handled a lot of that. He came to me and he said, Jason, I'd really like to just take this because mm -hmm. I also had the same vision mm -hmm. and I had talked to him about it before. And he came and he was, 
I, it's almost like I looked in the mirror. I, I seen I have a little bit more ambition than I need sometimes. Mm -hmm. And but he was fired up about it, and so he's took it and run. He's went to uh, several local businesses because it costs so much to do this stuff. Oh, I, know. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we have a couple of things, I think my power bill was twelve hundred fifty dollars mm -hmm. in uh, January because we had the White Christmas right. and the, the right. Troy Burns and. Yep. But he's really, he's done well with that. He's yep. approached businesses and I got to tell you something good. that one of my best friends did for me, and this was hysterical. I used to bring in groups, my uh, partner and my, my friend for life, Bill Senior, and I did uh, Jasper Singing Promotions. And we had this idea, and we were all revved up like y'all, and we were going to do it. And we did it, and it cost us money every time. We did it. We did yeah. it. Because we kept doing it as a love offering. And so we brought the Booth Brothers to town. And I don't know what you know about them, but they're like <coughs> number one, numero yeah. uno, the best, amazing, amazing, amazing. They're the gospel family. To of, get uh, them, it's $6,500. Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, I love all you folks that came to these singings, but y'all did not put in enough money. I had to cough <laughs> up most of the time at least $4,000 oh, wow. out of my pocket. And I did it and did it and did it. And I love doing it, but my buddy, sweet, sweet Regina said, we're going to charge them $10 at the door. I said, well, we said it's going to be a love offering. She said, it is a love offering. They're going to love it, and they're going <laughs> to give us $10. They're going to love that So offering. we had one person that whined and belly ached, and he said, well, it's supposed to be a love offering. She said, it is. You, you love them $10 worth, and he was fine. <laughs> but the musicians, number one, fuel is higher than it's ever been. They can't get there for free, you know, and so everybody has to come out with a little bit of money. You have to pay your power bills. You have to make payments. The musicians have to be able to buy their fuel because even if it's a music ministry, God doesn't pump your gas. As somebody right. told me, God expects you to use your brain to come up with enough money to buy your to gas. Get there and back. So you have to get to the reality of this. The right. reality is you can do it, but you can't do it alone. The musicians can come, but they can't come pushing their car. They have to buy fuel. Right. So everybody has to kind of get on the same page and say it has to be at least a break-even situation. You have to come out. Everybody has to come right. out. And it's hard when you do a love offering. It, it is. It's very and hard. Rick's gone above and beyond. He's went to the businesses and what we're tra we've got a set budget to come up with to pay for everything that needs to be paid for, and just with our businesses. His, we're, we're getting there. Good. So that's what we're hoping. And I, I want to say thanks to everybody that's coming. But since it's the first one, a lot of people are doing stuff that, and they're charging nothing or close to nothing. Mm -hmm. And I know they can't always do that. But right. that's what we're hoping is to build something that's a community builder. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, people say what they want. But when you sing in the community choir next to somebody, from another church, that's mm -hmm. a bridge builder. Oh, sure it is. You know, sure it is. And I, I'm tickled that it that it's going the way it is. I really yeah. believe that yeah. it'll do good. In the future, we'll build off mm -hmm. of that. We'll try mm -hmm. to go bigger every year. Now, what about what you did in the auditorium? Tell me a little bit. Do you have pictures of before and after? I do. Okay. And also, I can show you some of them. But if anybody wants to look, I just thought of this a minute ago. Some people, it's grew to 2,000 members, I believe. Mm -hmm. But if you go, if you have social media, you can go to Friends of Kimsey Junior College building, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and as soon as you punch that in, it'll come up, and you can see all the way back to the beginning when wow. when I did a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. The rooms, all the plaster came off the auditorium. We did a church service out there. We it was Sunday night. I, I invited everybody to come out and have a weenie roast, and mm -hmm. you know, because that's. What I want to do. Not in the auditorium. No. Yeah. No. We yeah, tried yeah, that and yeah, the fire yeah. marshal got no. Yeah. But yeah. uh so it was we wound up going in there for a, a small service first and mm -hmm. uh, a friend of ours uh preached for a couple of minutes and I, I've got pictures from that. It was such a blessing that, that I have a church that was willing to do that. When the choir came up on the stage and there was just like a half a curtain hanging there and we had one piano that it was, but it was a blessing. Yeah, yeah. And I can look at those pictures because the ceiling was hanging, oh, wow. and all the plaster had washed off the side down to the brick being exposed, and and I can go back and look at it now, and it's all new sheetrock, and mm -hmm. it's it really takes you back. And the seating, I just 
Like I said, there's a lot of a divine intervention. Mm -hmm. I could have never put those chairs in there. They would have been two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it, but you did it. It just happened. You did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe God is pumping his gas. I don't I know. Think so. <laughs> I'll check when I get back to the truck. Maybe it'll be full. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is crazy. Now, how can we get businesses involved if they want to come on board and be a sponsor? How do we do this? Well, just tell them to get in touch with me. Um, the business has been, I don't have people just come up and hand me money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just. That yeah. happened to us when we did the yeah. community meal in McKaysville. I was walking through the IGA buying stuff and people would hand me a hundred dollar bill yeah. and say, we know what you're doing and we want you to put this to good use. Yeah. It's amazing it's just, the goodness of people. I yeah. Had, I had one guy that when I asked him for a, uh, a donation, he gave me a check for a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell who it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'd messed up and had the wrong name put on the check. Mm -hmm. So I took it back to him and I explained to him what I'd done. He said, it's not a problem. I said, we'll get it fixed. Uh -huh. So I went back two or three days later and I picked up the check that he had fixed and I got home and I started to write it down and opened it up the envelope and it went from $100 to $500. I love it. <laughs> I, I love and, it. And I called him. I said, listen, I said, this check's for $500. He said, I know it. I said, we're good. Do it. Yeah, and I, and that it is precious. Away, See, that know. is precious. And, yeah. and, and the, uh, all this money I've got coming in is paying for the advertisement and all that. Now, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm trusting the Lord it's going mm -hmm, to get there. Mm -hmm. So the night of, we're going to take up a love offering. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping we'll have five, 700 people there, mm -hmm. hope, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And all that love offering will go to Jason for, mm -hmm. the, for the building mm -hmm. and what he needs to do with it. So. We hope people come with big pocketbooks. Right, right. <laughs> and um, let me ask you this. Have you formed a 501 so people can make donations that is tax deductible? Well, we're working on that. It's okay. actually much more trouble than I thought. It is. They told, when Laura started some of the paperwork on it, that's my wife, by the way, um, they told her that uh, just to keep working on it, but it would probably take a year or more mm -hmm. before they would even recognize it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we've been blessed. I have an account at the credit union. It's Kimsey Junior College Building Fund. Mm -hmm. I did, it's the only way I knew to go about it. And we've had people mail in donations. That's what I wanted to say. I am so blown away. And for any viewers out there that that you're really discouraged and thinking that there's just not there's just not any good out there. Mm -hmm. People say that uh, we don't have the town we did, and there is people that come. Because when I was small, we did stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The community was like family. Mm -hmm. And there's, I've got donations, maybe not huge ones, but I have got a couple that was pretty good size. And I am just blown away by the love mm -hmm. of the community to see things like this. The, in the festivals, we'll have people laughing, and they'll hug me and say, it's like a reunion. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know these people were still around mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it, it gets you emotional talking mm -hmm. about it because mm -hmm. it is such a good thing that was almost, almost gone. Almost yeah. gone. I, I went there when the security guard was still there several times, five or six times. And then I went and there was a gate up. And it made me feel so sad to see that gate closed because then you couldn't get near the building. And I guess it's because people had done damage to yeah. it and, yeah. and destruction. And it just made me sad because I thought, what a waste because it's so beautiful. Now, are you able to expose some of the beautiful brick on the inside while you're redoing? And, and yeah, my wife's been pretty persistent in the gymnasium where a lot of it had, and towards the cafeteria, had just the paint come loose and mm -hmm. things. She's been pretty persistent, so we're taking that down to the brick and then going to seal that. I love your wife. It's, That's it's a great the, idea. It's the best it's so of both beautiful. worlds. Yes, yes. I, I told her, I said, in the gym, we'll have one wall that's a focal wall. Yeah. I have a struggle because where there's names signed and stuff mm -hmm. open on the bleachers, uh, these were people in my Don't class. Don't get rid of that. So yeah. I'm trying to, in the murals that was painted in the cafeterias coming loose, we're going to try to plexiglass it because... Mm -hmm. I knew the art teacher that did mm -hmm. that. They started mm -hmm. that when I was in school. Mm -hmm. And the, the nature trails, you know, the cranberry bog was there. I don't know if you've heard that. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. And I'm trying to bring it back to life. It was the furthest southeast cranberry bog in the United States. Wow. They say that birds flew over and dropped seeds, mm -hmm. I guess, flying south. And when they did, you know, the clear out, vegetation started to come back after, you know, it was red dirt for a long right. time they started growing like crazy. So yeah, they got something. some help and there's things you can press a button and it'll tell you about the tree. There's labels, the, the high controls are beautiful. 
That's so we're awesome. hoping to get that and get some of the local schools involved mm -hmm. and so they could have a hand in, in doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's there's so much to say. I, wow. I, I try to be quiet, but there is just yeah. so much. A bunch much. of goodness. Yeah. A bunch of goodness. Well, right now, we're going to take a commercial break. And after the commercial break, we're going to do a song by Mr. Ella J. And I hope it's going to encourage Mr. Ella J as he watches the program today <laughs> to decide that he wants to do an event at the school. Because, you know, right now he's in the studio and he's busy and all I get is whining and griping. But maybe... <laughs> Maybe pretty soon he'll be ready to be back on stage again, so we'll see. And I think this would be a great place to be on stage. Here we go. We'll be back shortly. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside-down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Folks, we thank you for coming to L.A.J. today. My name is Dwight Sanford. Some call me Mr. L.A.J. <laughs> Here's a little song I wrote. I hope you learn it note for note. The bank says it's foreclosing and the pickup needs repair. The LP tanks on zero and my will is almost there. The hope I had left with you when you walked out the door. I would say things can't get worse, but I've been wrong before. 
The postman brought a letter. He said he needs my signature. He don't know you had to go and the way you left me here. I told him I don't love you. Oh, but the Lord knows I still do. And he knows just what I feel inside and the things I'm going through. My brother said there's a bottle that'll make this go away. You could drink until it's over or until my dying day. I could do all this and make believe I don't care anymore. And I could hope it don't get worse again, but I've been wrong before. The boss man called from work today. He left a message on my phone. I called in to talk to him to see what's going on. They're laying off across the plant, employees by the score. I would say things can't get worse but I've been wrong before. My father said there's a bottle that'll make this go away. I could drink until it's over or until my dying day. I could do all this and tell myself I don't care anymore. And I could hope it don't get worse again, but I've been wrong before. And our country's going straight to hell on a highway paved with hope. And if we keep playing around with this, we'll hang by our own rope. Thank you. Okay, y'all know who that was. That was Mr. Ella J. Mr. Ella J is kind of pouting at me right now because I insisted he learn Smoky Mountain Memories and he <laughs> said I'd never even heard that song. <laughs> but anyway, he'll get over it. You know what? Music brings people together. Definitely. And, and the idea that you're going to be able to bring people together in this amazing building. And I guarantee you, a whole lot of folks are like me. They pulled up there and looked at it and thought, what a waste. Well, what a waste. No, how, well, many we years, all thought that. how many years did it sit there? Not used? The last classes was in 2006. Mm -hmm. um, and then they moved over to what used to be the high school. Mm -hmm. And I know that it was important to get everything on one campus, sure. but uh, it was so sad. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like walking back through time because you'll the lunch menu is still hanging there from oh, 2006. Wow. Uh, in the janitor's closet, I don't even know how this is possible. I looked and there's a folder and I open it up and it's somebody that I was in school with and that's been a few Long years time, ago, yeah. you know, but it was still just laying there. Wow. And it's like when you go to the third floor, you know, there's no steps, but it's frozen in time. Wow. The last things they did, they what did What do you some, mean there's no steps? They took the steps out for the third floor. That's why there's the haunted stories and all that. Well, okay, okay, tell me, <laughs> why did they take the steps out? Well, uh, there was one problem. The floor tiles was asbestos, uh -huh. but now that's a low class. It's something you can basically cover. Right. But I guess the biggest thing they added three huge fire escapes, huge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for you know, in case they expanded, they'd mm -hmm. always have, and the main hall in the middle that goes to the elevator and the uh, stairs is where the steps went up. And 
for the most does the part. Does the elevator work? The elevator does work. Okay. We got it up and working. So if you, if I want to go see the third floor, you can take me there. I can't take you on the elevator. You have to go up a ladder. The so ladder. There's, there's just <laughs> a, I've never it, seen an elevator climbing a ladder. I'm going to need you to sign some waivers before you get on there too. <laughs> <laughs> but I did talk to the elevator company, and they said if I could extend the shaft, that it was an expandable elevator, but it was probably going to be about $150,000. I don't have that much to go up to yeah. the third floor. Never That's mind. what it's going to cost you to go up there. <laughs> Never but mind. I was telling you, it's frozen in time. The, the water fountains is, I mean, they're beautiful. They're not touched, and it's got the old dials on both sides. It's got, it had a Dean's apartment up there, so it has a beautiful fireplace and oh built in. God, I want to go, but I don't want to spend $150,000 to get there. <laughs> well, it's worth a shot, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. But okay. I am going to put some steps up there, okay. and that, that'll happen in the next few months. Okay. That way I can I can access wait patiently it. Yeah, you can months. wait patiently. Yeah, okay. So we'll see, but it's 3,800 square feet, and I thought that might According be a According to Fitbit, steps are your friends. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take so many. I, I loaded that app and my phone exploded. Yeah. It couldn't yeah, count it. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. This is amazing that you're doing that. I am so thankful. Now, what year did you acquire the building? I got it. I've only had it less than two years, a little mm -hmm. over a year and a half. And it, Who I did you approach and how did you come up with the nerve to do it? Well, I knew, I, I keep saying divine intervention. I knew that um, the township owned it. I had found that out. And I was looking to maybe get an acre or two so I could put some apartments. I don't have any retirement. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been self-employed, so that was my plan. Mm -hmm. And that plan kept getting interrupted by mm -hmm. what wouldn't stop running through me. And I really wasn't trying to buy it, but it wouldn't leave me. Yeah. yeah. I, I woke up with it. I went to bed with it. So I called them up and said, you know, hey, I'm just going to be straight with you. I can't get this off my mind. And I think I want to buy your school. Mm -hmm. And saying it just about give you yeah. anxiety. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they said, well, we'll, we'll think about it. How many acres stuff. is it? I wound up with 30 acres. I'm trying to get a little bit more of it oh so I can expand the that youth stuff. That is incredible. Um, but it's, that's, that's what incredible. I want is a private play. When you pull up there on all the way to the other road, and there is trails and woods and overlooks. We have overlook, and wow. you can just do whatever. And that's, that is too cool. That's what I want. That is too cool. Yeah. 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 It'd be great for a getaway place. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I just wanted to say that if I do a Airbnb thing, I'm going with a different approach. And people think I'm crazy, but I don't believe I am. Mm -hmm. I believe if I can offer a place that you can bring your family, that there's not going to be a a brewery on this end and that end. I'm not bashing anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that there's people that wants to be able to let their kids run around sure. and know that if they wind up slipping into the, you know, we're, we've got a theater kind of in mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. auditorium too, mm -hmm. then there'll be a, a wholesome a movie that, movie the whole family can that they see. can watch. Yeah. And there'll yeah. be other, if other people's there, they're going to be like-minded. I believe there's a lot stronger audience than that than we we ever believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's where I'm aiming. Well, and I told you what my goal is. There there are people who just want to gather together to giggle and to enjoy good food and, and just time together. Just time spent together in a right. safe place. And and how safe could right. how safe could it be in Ducktown, Tennessee? It's pretty right. safe, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe we could get Joyce to come out and cook us some of that fried chicken. Oh from my the, gosh. And Corey, that, yeah, we'd have to get her sweet son to come and cook. You have to get he Corey was amazing, and, yes. I, yes. I, I, I've been throwing hints their way. Yeah, I, do, I, I need a you. I need a Sunday restaurant that yes. we can go. He makes so much money doing what he does, and he's so great at selling yeah. tractors. So we we got to leave him alone. But man, yeah. I, that was probably one of the saddest days ever because yeah. I enjoyed my time oh, it there. it broke my heart. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was where we, that was the go-to for yeah. after church. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Well, maybe and all. your place can be the go-to. Well, that's what we hope. Yeah, we already awesome. turned it in on Sunday night. We used to all go out and eat on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Well, what we did is I've got one room finished. It's got tables all the way down it and a little kitchenette. Mm -hmm. So what we did is just brought the party over there. That's so awesome. we all bring potluck and things like that. And we have a good, the kids play in the gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, pick and sing every once in a while. And it is 
we have gotten so much closer. That is so cool. And that's what I want. I mean, the proof's there. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you know, one of the things that we did at the community meal in McKaysville, it started with the Kaler. I can see, I can see Linda Kaler walking in with her crock pot and her food. We all brought food from home, but sadly, when it had to move to Tennessee, when Wanda passed away and we had to leave that building, the state of Tennessee made them make all food on premises and we were no longer allowed to bring in stuff and that changed the way people were eating good home cooking that yeah. we were at home yeah, cooking that like. we were bringing and they wouldn't <clears throat> let us do that anymore and I thought that was so sad so you know sometimes they have this system that we all have to go by and it really doesn't work in all situations. You You're know? preaching to the choir, huh? Yes, yes. And when it's a when it's a church event, you ought to be able to bring your stuff in, you know. So maybe you can run under the radar and and it be something that. Well, that's how it's zoned right now, and which I won't go into the zoning issues, mm -hmm. but it can be used for religious things, mm -hmm. uh, educational, mm -hmm. and a single family uh, residence. By the way, we moved out there. Mm -hmm. I rented my house, and we now live there. Oh wow! So. Um, and we're trying to go in with that and, you know, keep everything legal, mm -hmm. but the events and stuff we have, we're, we can do that legally, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm I hoping. It. Well, thank goodness that your head wouldn't shut up till you listen to it. It, <laughs> it right. never shuts up, but I try to block out what I can. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, it's so interesting that um, you being from there, because a lot of people left the area because there was no work. They couldn't, you know, exactly. couldn't make the money they'd make in the city. So, so many people left. Did you ever leave the area? No. Uh, basically, I've lived here, uh, you know, I've lived an interesting life. I've made good decisions and a, a lot of bad ones. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you come back to your foundation and it's time to grow up and be a man and um, you start having a yearning for what once was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And most people dismisses that, but I can't. I, when I see those events that we have there and people laughing and like I said, people hugging me, um, they say it's just like you went back in time and something that they thought was lost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it's, I love it. If what you about, come to an event, you'll you'll see what I, you'll feel well, that. I'm coming. I'm coming. And it's April the 22nd. April 22nd. And I wrote down so I would not, because my mind. Um, it's April the 22nd at six. That's the singing. Mm -hmm. And then following, just shortly after that, is the fall festival. Mm -hmm. And Raven Welch is in charge of that. We love Raven. She's in charge of getting the groups together there. We used to have some very good talent. Mm -hmm. All day long, there's mm -hmm. bluegrass and gospel in the auditorium, and there's food trucks. I mean, we have a bouncy place. I mean, not just a house. They have a Ninja Warrior thing, mm -hmm. and the kids can just have a ball. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have axe throwing, and we're trying to expand every time. So there's plenty to do. That that mm -hmm. The Spring Festival I wrote down, May the 6th, and it starts at 10. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty more coming up, but mm -hmm. as I said, if you go to the website of Friends of Kimsey Junior College, you can you can have a field day. If you've never seen it, you'll spend a while on there. I'm excited. That's cool. That's cool. Have you regretted one second of getting into this, or are you happy you're involved? No, I'm, I'm very happy I'm involved. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was yeah. a little, little nervous about, you know, when Eric said you need to raise this amount of money just to do it, I, was, man, I, was, I told my wife, I said, I don't know if I can yeah. do this or not. Yeah. And then the Lord just took over and, yeah. and it, it's supplied, you know. Well, it was so funny when we did Jasper Singing Promotions. I, I grew up in, in an area where at different times we lived near different churches. And at that time, my mother decided she wasn't going to follow the Lord. And so I would walk to churches. And I didn't ask what denomination. It was what church was closest to us to walk to. Right. And when I had a singing at the Methodist Church in Jasper, I saw one of my friends the next week. And I said, you didn't come to the singing. And she said, you had it at the Methodist Church. <laughs> and I thought, what does that mean? She said, we don't go to the Methodist Church. Really? And I thought, are you kidding me? So I learned a quick lesson, and I've never, I mean, I've been to Church of God, Church of Christ, I've been to all of them. I visited with friends and different people, and I've walked to several of them as a child to go to church. So I'd never heard that before, and it kind of blew my mind because God loved the Methodist Church. They let us use it year after year after year to bring the inspirations to town. Mm -hmm. And then when we raised money, 
for a friend who was battling cancer, we again went to the Methodist Church. We had it so packed out, we had to open the doors and people were sitting in the yard in their chairs. Really? So it was amazing. And so I never thought about denomination. It was church. Right. <laughs> it was just church. That's what it <laughs> so, be. Yeah, it was kind of weird to me. But well, Sherry, we deal with that. And, and everybody that if watching this and yourself is, we're familiar with it. The community revival we did at, uh, at our church, we, I, I dealt with that and I, I see how strong it is. You'll have people down to the point of saying, well, I'm not gonna stand and sing beside somebody that goes to this church or somebody that preached over here. I can't and imagine. I promise when we get to heaven, there's not going to be a section for Baptist. No. Now I've got my beliefs and everything, and right. but uh, people that come to the school, I'm very persistent. We're not going to have an end times uh, prophecy thing because no matter what you believe, mm -hmm. somebody's going to disagree with you in your room, and it's right. just the devil loves nothing more than for us to be divided. Right. And I know that I'm going to have <laughs> offense because I am trying so hard to bring together what has once been broke up. Mm -hmm, and people mm -hmm. don't like it, but they do once they become a part of mm -hmm. it. I've had people I'm say, excited. I look at it totally different now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, and, and again, um, I can remember different churches that I visited and I got something from every one of them. I never left there empty hearted or empty handed. Yeah. I got something from every single one of them. And I think that's what we, you know, we need to we need to share that. And as yeah. long as they teach the Bible, read the Bible, talk the Bible, we're good. Yeah, yeah. we're good. We're yeah. good. The main thing so. is to getting the gospel out. Mm -hmm. um, there's small things that we disagree with. There's bigger things too. But it's really not the bigger things. It's the small things mm -hmm. we fight over. Mm -hmm. The things that in the real end don't matter. Don't matter. Don't matter. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to another song because if we don't do a certain amount of music, then I'll get a call or a text or somebody at <laughs> one. So we're going to do a little bit more music. And I wish that I had the Kalers here to sing for you. But um, I'm going to find what I had and I'm going to I'm going to lock it down put it under lock and key because I had the CD with I'll Live Again. We're going to go to some music now. I think it'll probably be Mr. Ella J since he happens to be the starring role while he's absent. You know, he's still the star of the show and he's absent now, but here we go. Okay, it was on this day in 1943 that my daddy left here to go to World War II. My uncle Emmett, his brother, walked with him from Pumpkin Center all the way downtown to watch him get on that train over at the depot and leave here for war. Emmett said he was scared to death he'd never come back home. And he said it was raining that evening, and he said he cried when Daddy left out on the train. And then later on after that, I wrote a little song about it. It's called Baby Blue. I'm looking down from a hill top at the lights of my hometown. This place is all so different now, and they close down. That old wooden bridge I fished from is replaced with man-made stone. The swimming pool and our old school, like you, they both are gone. I keep thinking about the summer of 1969 Long ago and far away When I thought you were mine For better or worse They are thin So much has changed since then My crazy heart spins round and round When I dream of wind when the rock and roll were played in that old silver Chevrolet, and Ann Rock was all we knew back then. With brown eyes and short leave eyes, I remember you. But it's all over now, baby. 
You got to hear he loves that song because it's about his daddy and you know he's he's a daddy's boy he's also a mama's boy you know and i gotta say before i forget because i'll tell y'all i've had covid and and your memory does something weird when you've had yeah, covid right just in case i was to forget friday is mr ella J's birthday mm -hmm. and he will be older than dirt that day <laughs> so if y'all see him just say lord have mercy sherry said you're gonna be older than dirt today his birthday is Friday, so happy, happy birthday to Dwight Sanford, Mr. Ella J. And I uh, hope you have a good day, and I hope you get out of the studio soon and quit whining about that dang song you're learning. <laughs> 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 you know, this is an exciting time, y'all. This is an exciting time. It's an exciting time. Spring is coming, and I can imagine that place will be absolutely beautiful in the spring. Probably a lot of daffodils are coming up. And just a great place to get out and take your family. The event's going to be on April 22nd at 6 p.m. Yep. Is there any other time that people can see it before then? If they want, are you there daily? I am, and the not driving up um, is is so hard on me to do because that happens a lot, you know, because it's a something to be seen. Mm -hmm. But I do work with people. If you'll contact me through the. Uh, website, the mm -hmm. Friends of Kimsey Junior College on Facebook, mm -hmm. then I can try to schedule something, especially if what you're What if a sponsor who wants to come and see it and say, do I want to invest in this? All they is have that to the do best is way contact to do me. Okay. They can reach, it, the easy, I keep saying that because it's so easy because it's checked continuously. Mm -hmm. If you send me a message and I'm, if it's one of my 17 hour days, mm -hmm. you might not, I might not see it immediately. Mm -hmm. but. My wife and I both checks that consistently. So if you post on there or just send a personal message, mm -hmm. we'll get it. Okay. Um, okay. So any, anybody that's interested, if you have a vision, I feel like the Lord is going to put somebody in my path. And if he don't, he'll provide. Mm -hmm. But I feel like he's going to put somebody in my path that has the same vision that mm -hmm. when they go to bed at night, it's what they're going to think about. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why am I doing yeah. I feel like that's going to yeah. happen, and yeah. that's where God's plan is really going to yeah. unfold. Well, I know somebody I'm going to introduce you to, and I think you will fall in love with him. And I think his he he is an amazing. He's number one. He's an engineer, and he's he's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. Okay, I'm so glad that y'all were here, and and my visit with AC and Linda actually ended up turning up how I knew that you were doing this right. because we spent time together, and what a blessing they have been to the community. Oh, what an really amazing, are. amazing blessing. And um, to the Parton family, you know, gosh, they started what happened here at ETC that was so successful. The Parton family were, were one of those that we always go to. I used to watch. I, I wanted to meet. I've never met them in person. Oh, they're precious, precious, to, precious. So. They went to Kentucky with us. We loaded up the motorhome with all kinds of toys and goodies that our viewers brought to us and took to distressed, really, really sad situation in Kentucky. 
we got there and it was 23 degrees. This was in coal mining areas where jobs were lost and it, it was just a horrible, horrible situation. And people lined up at 3 a.m. in the morning in the cold to get in line to get toys and bicycles and things that we were distributing oh up there. And the Parton family went with us and they provided music while people were standing in line waiting. Oh, so that's awesome. They are, they, are, they are truly God's people. They are amazing. So it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be really cool. Are you going to have refreshments that night? Are you going to have a snack bar? We're going to do something. I'm trying to kind of balance it. We've got all new carpet mm -hmm. and stuff. So... I'm probably not going to put anything that's going to stain, but we're thinking waters and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do have a concession area set up, so I don't know where we're going to go, but there will be something. Okay. Especially okay. on the intermission and things like that. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Right. You can, any any dollars you can raise toward even selling drinks right. and, you know, and whatever. I'm hoping somebody will help to donate or uh, send me some kind of package deal where I can get snacks and things mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. And I may get some of the local children that wants to help out. Do you have ovens that cook in that I do. property? I do. I'm wanting to fire the ones Do you ones have up big commercial the, ovens? I have one in the uh, restaurant and I am hoping to, now my wife don't know this, so it's don't, don't tell her. Bleep this don't out. tell her. Yeah, don't the tell thing her. across my mouth. And I'll, <laughs> don't you know, tell her. But I am looking at getting a, a, a double commercial oven just because it's something that's very you affordable. Need it. Yes. And um, like I said, if I if nothing else happens, we're going to start doing a, a Sunday meal between us. That'd be awesome. You know, and I, but yeah. that, that's what yeah. I want to do. That yeah. way, when we have like men's conferences and things like women's conferences, I want to have a team that can come in and supply food for mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. And I've got more than enough space mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do that. The I'm kitchen's excited. great. So. I'm not going to give you $150,000 to go on the third floor. I That's will right. wait for you to build the steps. Right. <laughs> I'll wait for you. So thank you so much. And give your precious Kelly a hug when you see her. Um, for y'all who don't know, Kelly was diagnosed with breast cancer at a very young age, and she has fought and battled, and she's winning that battle, and we're going to keep praying for her. She's wow. amazing. Yeah, and if you're in Blue Ridge, run by Lynn Mark and say, I just want to tell Kelly I love her. So <laughs> she's she is precious, precious, she is, precious. She is a fighter. She is a fighter. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, I want you to start with us tomorrow on the program. I want you to show up right in front of your TV with a pad and pencil because I have one of my favorite attorneys coming with me. And we are going to talk about estate planning. And I can tell you, I have, I have handled some of your estates, and I know that you haven't planned well. You need to tell your children what you want them to have. And Miss O'Neill is going to be here tomorrow, and we're going to talk about estate planning. It's one of the most important things and the greatest gift you can give your children is to let them know how you feel about what you have. How do you want to handle the end of your life? How do you want to handle your treasures. Do you want so and so to have it and then they get there in the middle of the hall having to knock down drag out because mama said she could have it? Let your children know what you want them to have. Does that, is that not good advice? It makes real, yeah, good, makes advice. real yeah. good advice. And Great if you've got idea. a 66 Chevelle hid in a building and you want to give it to somebody, I I'll know somebody, that, the good thing about it, he's only got <laughs> one kid so he won't have that problem. <laughs> but it, It's so weird because at the end of your life, and we have seen Lives are ending suddenly. Yeah. COVID has done a number on many lives who were not prepared. And I think that's why I told O'Neill it's so important. I don't care if you're 29 or if you're 99, get yourself ready to go. And the other way you can get ready to go is to what? Be saved. That's right. <laughs> there you go. That's there right. you go. It's the main thing. That's right. I will see you again tomorrow right here on ETC. Tune in again and don't forget April the 22nd. Put it on your calendar. We will be together. Okay.